All right, welcome back to another episode of Island. <sighs> Maybe that bet was a bit too hard. I slowly walked back to my room, trying to cool down my overheated body. Maybe my body feels so heavy because I stayed in the bed for too long. Oh well, maybe it's because I ate too much for dinner. We didn't just have fish, we also had sea snake soup, and it was surprisingly delicious! Sarah was scarfing it down and even asked for seconds. <laughs> hmm? What is this? Pieces of paper are scattered on the floor. They look rather familiar. It was yummy. Thanks, Sarah John. These are Gwen's notes. There's no mistaking it. Judging from what's written, it must be from when Sarah collected Kuan's dishes from, din from dinner. <laughs> Honestly. Didn't Sarah notice that she dropped them? I followed the trail of notes, picking them up as I go. Sure, feel free to ask me anything. Hmm, Sarah must have asked Kuan something. You're so naughty. Flash! What the hell did she say to Jask? I think you'll come to understand when you grow up. Hide! Uh, it looks like Kuan dodged a question. Sarchan, do you like Sesame Sun? What? What's Kuan talking about? And how did Sarah answer that? Oh, maybe I can guess from Kuan's response. What did she, what did she write next? <laughs> what? What happened? Here you can use this plush. There's a piece of tape below the scribble. I've been keeping them on hand just in case. Wait, are we gonna do bondage? Excuse me? What the hell is this about? Do I really have to answer that? Yes, please do. I'm incredibly curious now. Okay. Oh, it's a big reveal! Uh oh. Ah! Preoccupied with the uh, notes, I run to the door at full speed. Hey, this is my room. The trail of notes has led me to my own door. Which means that Sarah's inside. Well, I'm sorry, I was just crawling to. I'm just reading stuff. I was right. Yeah, it must be because I stayed in the bed for too long. I'm lying. My long bed isn't the uh, only reason why my heart is racing. She pushes me onto the bed without giving me a chance to reply. For some reason, I don't have the will to resist either. Hmm? It's kind of warm. And the pillow feels a little damp, too. <laughs> Sleeping in a guy's room? How careless can she get? No, not really. Usually, I probably wouldn't even have noticed. But now, the warmth and scent Sarah left on the bed were, uh, are all I can feel. I can't take my eyes off her as she throws her damp hair between her fingers. And I can't help but wonder why Sarah was waiting for me. Uh, no, I'm fine. No, I'm not. Seriously, what's wrong with me? It feels like the core of my body is on fire. And there's this prickly sensation in my chest. At this rate, I'll... Sorry, could you open the window a bit wider? Oh, hi, the sea breeze drifts into the room when Sarah opens the window. It's a tepid wind at best, but still cooler than the air in the room. Alright, at least my head's cooled down a little. Thanks, I feel a lot better now. When I try to get up, Sarah pushes my upper body down to the bed again. Though I do finally calm down, her touch on my skin immediately heats me up once more. 
I can't stand it any longer. Ah! I said it later realized that I'm clanking to Sarah. Sarah doesn't resist my embrace. You meant to talk uh, to Kuan a while ago, didn't you? What did you talk about? Sarah whispers near my ear. Her voice is incredibly sweet. Why is she so precious to me? Huh? もしかしたらと思い、ゴンさんにお伺いしたんです。ああ。確かにこの島では海蛇を古来より薬として用いてきたんだそうです。はあ。ですがその行為は。セラ、アバーチャルゲイズ。勢力増進だそうです。ああ
ここに来たのはあくまで私の意思です。ああ OK, OK, let's calm down and sort this out. Koan told you that the serpent's venom works as an aprodisiac. はい。And you came here in your PJs immediately after your bath. はい。And then you lay down on my bed waiting for me to come back. はい。You should have taken advantage of this opportunity! No, no, you can't do that! Yeah, she's still a m a t u r e <laughs> My confusion. I heard an angel and a devil w h i s p e r i n g to each other. Is there a way to do that? A mistake. That's right. This is a mistake. We lost sight of our goal, swayed by the atmosphere. Our goal. The reason Sarah and I are together. Maybe you are. バイモン病を治す力はなかったのでしょうか、huh? 魚屋さんもクオンさんも海蛇の紅葉を知っていましたそれくらいこの島では昔からよく海蛇を利用していたんですにもかかわらずバイモン病の治療薬として知られていないということは Apparently, I'm the only one who do lost sight of her goals. I got engrossed in the fishing, set myself a dinner, and allowed myself to be tempted by a girl. But in, but, but in the meantime, Sarah didn't forget her own goal. And then, she came to my room because I'm the only one she can talk to、uh, about it. And yet, here I am, losing myself to temptation. How pathetic. <sighs> Alright, l time to get back to business. Don't you think it's a bit too soon to give up, Sarah?、Hmm? Maybe the Grand of Family kept the recipe for the medicine secret. Maybe they might have the prodigious story to divert people's attention from its true effect. Doesn't it, doesn't it happen a lot? Authorities deceiving the people in order to protect their own power, I mean. <laughs> Sarah's face remains clouded over. I can't blame her. After all, I know that I'm seeing something unlikely. Wait, I feel like I'm about to remember something. Um. Now, give me a moment. It's on the tip of my tongue. サラフレッシュスミアスライトスマイルをチェックしてみてください。今日は外れだったというだけです。また明日から別の方向を検討しましょう。You will force yourself to smile again, But in the end, we just played around while trying to catch them. Then we were going to investigate the taunted area. But it just ended up being a leisurely swim in the ocean. And today, we were going to find a cure for suit bite syndrome. But instead, we just enjoyed a day of fishing. We're just killing the small mysteries all, all around us. What will be left in the end? Nothing but a bland, boring, real world. This is so stupid. It's okay to make mistakes. Hi? So, what do you. I approached Sarah, breaking the one meter rule that I, 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 I do impose and ask myself. I'm talking about the reason you came to my room. You said it was because you were in the mood, right? But catching, swimming, and fishing. For a girl and character, all precious summer memories. Especially when you enjoy it together with a guy. So, what's wrong with adding on our memory? Want to top them all? It'd be nice if she could look back to it one day and reminisce about the fun she had this summer. But. That isn't what she wanted. I know. We're not going out or anything. That's not what she's after. So it wouldn't make her happy. Maybe I'm not the right person for this. But 
maybe nobody in this world is qualified enough to be by her side. What she wants is someone who exists outside of all logic and reason in the world. Setsuna-san,私と恋人になりたいんですか。Well,私は恋人とは自分の命をかけられる相手のことだと思います。その人のためなら死んでもいいと思えるくらい好きな人のことだと思います。ですが私は。I already know what she's going to say, but she still says it out loud. Setsuna-san のためには死ねません。なすべきことをなさずに死ぬことはできません。She's asking me for an answer even after she's rejected me. Would there be any point in answering honestly? Would I be willing to die for Sarah's sake? Oh my lord, are you really gonna give me an option? Again! I'll go with that. That I can't die for her. I'm the same as Sarah. I didn't spend all this time with her because I wanted to make some fun summer memories. That's not what I'm here. I can't lie for you either. These are my true feelings. If Sarah's life weren't in danger right in front of me, I did most definitely try and help her. And I wouldn't mind doing anything to accomplish that. But what if sacrificing my own life were the only way of saving her? In that case, I'd probably leave her to die. I may end up regretting it deeply later, but I'm sure that's the choice that you make. Because Sarah and I are comrades, nothing more. If one of us collapses along the way, it's the other's task to take up your load and keep on moving. That's what it means to be comrades. But... Is she going to keep on repeating the same cycle? Is she going to forget about yesterday's disappointment and today's despair just to go through the same thing all over again tomorrow? Hasn't she considered that doing so will lead her nowhere? Yeah, nothing's changed. Everybody is bound to experience disappointments in their life. And everybody will be overcome by despair at some point. Not that I have the right to talk. I have no memories of any such things. But I'm sure I've experienced them before. That's why I can't afford to stand still here. There's no need to. Sorry for bringing up these weird things. Sarah smiles as if she really is unfazed. I see. This is how she's been living up, and, uh, up until now. Her disappointment and despair is what keeps her going. But she use her as, as an example to follow and do the same. About that, there's something I've been wondering. I finally remembered what I, I, I was about to say. It wasn't just a random whim. I definitely seen something about the connection between sea serpents and suit blight syndrome before. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop! Do not scare me! The true legends of Urashima. That's right. It's that book I found with Rene. One of the illustrations in it showed a woman dressed in black, together with some kind of snake. Thinking back, the picture must have been. Let's go, Sarah. <laughs> To the underground library. There, we'll we will find what we're looking for. <sighs> the moment we step inside, Sarah lets out a gasp of amazement. It's my second time in here, but the sheer amount of books still dazzles me. Rene's father, Ohara Norimasa, was a folk folklorist, and apparently he was doing research on the island. Why didn't this place come to mind as soon as Sarah said she was going to stand up to 
suit blight syndrome. I must have been afraid. I felt as if the person who left a threat towards me might still be here. No, maybe the reason was much simpler. Come here, extra pillow. There we go. I did been ignoring the past. I thought that as someone from the future, the past didn't matter to me. And there was no need for me to know it. But that just isn't right. And to summarize the results of his research, um... Ah, here it is. It's his book. I pick up the book from a pile. The True Legends of Hiroshima. Look at this page, Sarah. I opened the book at the page in question and hand it to her. She seems to have cut on immediately. Heavy. And look at this woman's clothing. She's covering all her skin. Sure, looks like a suit blight syndrome patient to me. Huh? She starts to see something, but then seems to change her mind and swallow her words. I already know what she's but she was going to say. This woman obviously looks like a witch. So the witches don't represent the Garanda family. They seem to represent suit blood syndrome patients as a whole. The legend says that the disease is a curse cast upon the islanders by a witch. But in fact, it's the ill who were taken for witches and treated with contempt. Sarah, Sarah's question presses me to scan the page for further information. I'm trying to pick up on some keyboards from amongst the scientific jargon. The customer exiling criminals sitters that a contaminated exists all over Japan. Arashima, which is a single island far removed from the mainland, could be considered a perfect location for a penal colony. No, I'm sure it's not just them. It probably refers to anybody affected by illness. Look, it also mentions serpents. Serpents have traditionally been likened to dragons and are worshipped as the messengers of the gods. Therefore, people who are bitten by snakes were said to have in incurred the wrath of the gods and were punished for their sins. Back then, back when there weren't any effective ways to treat diseases, the ill were feared, shunned, and despised. Nowadays, on this island, suit blood syndrome patients are still treated that way. There's nothing strange about that. If the disease were cont contagious, the lives of everybody in the village could, uh, would be in danger if it were ignored. So in order for the group to survive, it is necessary to expel the weak. The community of this island descended from a gathering of exiles. And the mainlanders uh, derog der derogatorily called it the island where witches dwell. So, Boryuma referred to this island. Do you have the power to drive pest pestilence away? No, it's the exact, exact opposite. Eventually, they created the legend. It allowed them to assert that they were no criminals. And the tea had a legitimate reason to govern the island. And to paint over the stigma that they were witches. Now, that doesn't seem to be entirely right either. I flip to the next page and skim over it. That lies the history of the formation of Orashima. The true purpose of the, the, the deportations was the stabilization of society. The system was deemed necessary in order to fortify social structures by removing any impurities. 
the same can be said about the small community of Boroshima. By expelling the corrupt and the contaminated, the mainland was able to obtain peace. But, it's impossible to erase any impurities from this world by simply pretending that they don't exist. That's why history repeated itself on this island. The Garanda family were the ones who, put, who, who first proposed the subjugation of the island. They started ostracizing those who threatened the island's public peace. <laughs> I unconsciously stopped flipping the pages. Want to stop? That's our response. But Sarah doesn't nod either. I flip to the next page. They were especially thorough when dealing with sufferers of suit blight syndrome, a mysterious disease that he feared. Newborn children were deliberately exposed to the sun, and if they displayed any symptoms, <coughs> they were executed on the spot. Sorry about it. Jesus Christ. Sarah has believed in the legend and the prophecy since she was little. It was her only solace after having lost her parents. But uh, what's written here is the opposite of everything she believes. There's no doubt that there's no doubt that this contributed to saving the island. In order to save the majority of the people, a minority had to be sacrificed. But how brutal can people get? How far can they go in order to survive and still get away with it? It was turned into common practice, and its ceremony became known as the Sun Tribute. The Fire Tribute ceremony, which is still performed at the Hiroshima Shrine today, is said to have been de de derived from this. Fire Tribute? <laughs>母が大きな松明を手に待っているのを。the specifics of that ceremony aren't recorded in the book, but they were passed down from mother to daughter. Sarah is the only person left alive who knows it. The Sun Tribute has transformed into the Fire Tribute and uh, lost its original purpose. Even if its specifics have been lost to history. The past is slowly be, be, be being forgotten. With the passage of time, the Garanda family stopped committing these brutal murders. With the arrival of Western medicine, Hiroshima finally started modernizing. However, sufferers of the en uh, endemic disease were still discriminated against as of old. Their existence was still a heavy burden on the island. As long as the disease, uh, disease exists, Hiroshima will not have a future. Or at least so the Garada family believed. Their new policy was to remove the sufferers from the towns and hide them from public view. Even now, several dozen patients still live confined in isolated huts scattered across the island. Oh. Oh. Sarah and I exchanged glances. <laughs> that we found at the shore and the one at the mountains. Were they built in order to quarantine suit blight syndrome sufferers? No, they've been abandoned, but when this book was written about 10 years ago, there were still people living in them. In one hut I visited, there lived a young girl, all by herself. 
She must have been separated from her family at a very young age. Since she was unable to speak or understand language. I decided to give the girl a name. Maya! It's the name of Sarah's friend! So she really existed! And she was quarantined in that small hut because she had suit blight syndrome. It was probably a secret, only known to a handful of adults like Ohara Norimasa, a member of one of the three families. Of course, there would have been no way for Sarah to know at the time, and there shouldn't be any official re records of it either. Still, this is the true origin of the stories about people being spirited away. <laughs> I can't answer... I, I, can't, I can't answer that, that question. Should have been isolated from the community. It's not hard to imagine that everything would have been dashed up if she'd been killed in a fire. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Sarah skims over to pages again with bloodshot eyes. However, the answer couldn't possibly be found there. Because this book was written before the fire occurred. Eventually, she reaches the final page and stops. The final page contains an afterword. I cannot judge whether or not the conduct of the crowd family was proper. There is also plenty of room for our, uh, argument as to why they had that special right. However, personally, I wish to believe that the that they willingly took on the dirty work in our stead. As a member of an hour of the free families, I cannot blame them for anything they did. The burden, the burden of the sin ought to be shared by us all. Tsumi. Is it really a sin to weed out the weak? Or are the weak ones themselves the sinners who deserve to be punished? Or does the sin lie with society, which is too weak to survive without sacrificing anybody? And who is supposed to bear the punishment for the sin? But... what if... What if that destiny was shaped by the sin she inherited from her ancestors? Is this the punishment bestowed upon the Garada family? To keep on struggling towards an unattainable dream? The times should be about a change. The threat of suit white syndrome and the grudges between the three families are all becoming things of the past. And the children should have been able to gain their freedom. But nothing has changed yet. Sarah, who was looking towards the future more than anyone, is still trapped in the past. No, maybe that's only natural. Sarah wasn't looking towards the future. She was just averting her gaze from the past. Nevertheless, I can't blame just her. The ones that fought are her ancestors who tried to conceal the past and allowed it to fade. That's not true, Sarah. I pointed the last page of the book. I would like to express my sincerest thanks to Grand of Maria for her invaluable advice in writing this book. Grand of Maria. It's my first time seeing this name, but I've got a hunch who it refers to. It's Sarah's mom. It seems like I was right. 
This book contains the dark pages of the Garada family's history, which they've kept concealed from public view. Yep. Sorry about that. It would have been impossible for someone from the Ahara family to do all this research by himself. Your mom helped them. Helped them. This one sentence isn't enough for us to understand the full circumstances. However, she probably wanted to bring the chapter to a close. No matter how much of the past is concealed and forgotten, it won't erase the sins she committed. If she did delay the atonement even further, her daughter, Sarah, would have had to take it over. In order to close this chapter of the past, it was necessary to publicize the facts. That's why she's worked together with Ohara Morimasa, Rene's father, to create this book. But, but, but they both passed away before it could have been published. Taking their wish to face up to the past with them. No, that's not true. At this very moment, their wish is being conveyed to the next generation. You don't believe your mom? <laughs> Sarah flinches and looks up at me with a slightly fearful expression. I can see the confusion in her eyes. I don't think she do believe then until today. Let's just disproved by her own mom. And if her own mom can't be trusted, then who can? Didn't you say that you wanted to be like your mom when you grew up? She decided to face up to the past. If you ignore any inconveniences and arm yourself with warped logic, the wiener of lies is going to start peeling off one day. And once it's exposed to the salt wind, so I'm going to rest. Or veneer. I don't know how to pronounce that word. How about you? It's okay to dream big and to work towards your ideals. Just meaning and try to make progress. But that only rings true if you know exactly what you're working towards. If you're just running without believing in whatever lies ahead, then you're just running away. The problem is, what do you believe in? Her mother, who uncovered the past? Or the prophecy brought here from the future? What's worth believing in to Sarah? Maybe it's her own wish? It's not as if Sarah never doubted whether she was really the one who do ship the island. She's been hesitating almost every day, experiencing anxiety and despair. And yet, she she's kept on trying to believe with all her heart. She's just barely managing to keep herself together. By trying not to hesitate or doubt, and try to expel all thoughts about it from the from, from her head. She finally brings up the question she's avoided all this time. What's the meaning of her life? I'm not the one who can give her the answer. Usually it's something that a parent has to teach short to their child. It's their responsibility as the ones who gave the child life. But Sarah's parents are both gone. For a very brief moment, I feel an intense hatred towards the Garanda Maria, who left nothing but this book when she passed away. If only she were alive, Sarah would have been able to live her life as a normal girl. But... Sarah just declared that she couldn't die for my sake. But what is she living for? All I could do is watch her as her tears stained the pages of the book. I can't... 
I can't even stop those tears. Much less answer her question. I just declared that I couldn't die for Sarah's sake. But then, why am I here? Why am I here with Sarah? I'll make the choice in the next episode. <laughs>